What's up guys, we are back with another educational video and this week we have what will undoubtedly be the most hated video in the history of my videos and that is about seed oils. Are they harmful? Are they gonna kill you? What does the research say? But first, before you hate it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment, follow the algorithm. I have been asked to do this video for almost a year now. I haven't done it mostly because I just don't wanna deal with the idiocy that is undoubtedly going to be in the comments and be shared online. First off, let's give some background. What are seed oils? Well, they're oils that come from seeds. So you have like canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, quite a few different oils. Why is this such a hot topic right now? Well, some people in the nutritional landscape, mostly of the carnivore and low carb ilk, have been recently pushing the perils and horrible things that seed oils do. And if you notice, it went from carbs are the cause of all problems to sugar is the cause of all problems to refined sugar is the cause of all problems to, ah, no, it's seed oils. This kind of follows the plethora of research over time demonstrating that ah, it's not carbohydrates that are the problem shown repeatedly. Uh, oh, it's actually not sugar itself that's the problem, shown repeatedly, and even refined sugar in the human randomized control trials don't seem to make a big difference on disease and disease markers. When you're replacing other carbohydrate with sugar, isochlorically, doesn't really make a difference. So I guess these folks ran out of stuff they could say about sugar and carbohydrates, and they were like, hmm, can't be calories. That, we can't, we can't push that rhetoric. That's not sexy enough. That sounds like a little bit of res personal responsibility if it's calories. And we don't like personal responsibility. So seed oils, that's it. Gotta be seed oils. Can't be saturated fat because you know carnivores, they love their fatty meats. So God forbid it be saturated fat. So when you look at the arguments against seed oils, and we're talking about mostly omega-6s in terms of the fatty acids like linoleic acid, what you see is that in epidemiology, the consumption of high amounts of these oils is associated with some negative health effects. When we talk about seed oils, it's a, it's a broad category, but essentially you're talking about mostly polyunsaturated fats and omega-6 fatty acids. When we look at this category, we have to look at in vitro or in mechanistic studies in animals, when they give high amounts of these and subject them to oxidation, because since it has a double bond, since these unsaturated fats have double bonds, they can be oxidized, we can see some negative effects on the cellular level, we can see negative effects in animals when they give high amounts of them. And so they've kind of taken this together and said, okay, see, seed oils are toxic. And then they do a bunch of big scaremongering about how these things are produced. It's produced the same way as motor oil. Oh! I don't care about any of that. What I care about is what do the human randomized control trials say? Why human randomized control trials? Well, because epidemiology is problematic because oils are the biggest source of increased calories in the diet over the last few decades. So they're not innocuous because those oils are contributing to energy toxicity, overeating, obesity, because people tend to overconsume them. If we wanna examine, are they uniquely harmful? We have to look at what happens when we take, for example, saturated fat and we substitute polyunsaturated fats in a one-to-one -one ratio, or omega-6 fats in a one-to-one -one ratio. So let's talk about the human randomized control trials. Human randomized control trials. You shall not pass. Let's look at, first of all, inflammation, because a lot of people say, well, you know, these double bonds can get oxidized and that's gonna cause a bunch of inflammation in your body and inflammation is gonna lead to heart disease. Okay, so what happens when we replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats in a one-to-one -one ratio? What happens to inflammation? Well, based on the studies that I've cited below, there is either a neutral effect or a positive effect on inflammation. This is where it comes to mechanisms versus outcomes. A mechanism in a Petri dish is just one Thing happening. Outcomes are the summation of hundreds and thousands of mechanisms. For example, picking out an isolated mechanism and saying don't consume something because of this mechanism, that's like saying, hey, that mutual fund, there's a stock in it that went down 
40% last year. Don't invest in that mutual fund. But then I go look at the mutual fund and the mutual fund overall is up 20%. Do I care more about the, the individual stock that was down 40% or the fact that this overall mutual fund is up 20%? That's the difference between mechanisms and outcomes. And so in this case, okay, maybe the fact that some of these lipids can be oxidized has a small negative effect on human health and inflammation. But obviously, it is more than compensated by the positive effects that it has. Because overall, when we actually measure inflammation in the human randomized control trials, we see either inflammation is the same or lower in people who replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat. Now, what do we see with heart disease? We see a similar trend. People who replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats either have a similar or lower risk of heart disease in the human randomized control trials. And in the prospective cohort studies, it's actually a much stronger effect because these studies are longer. People who replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, there is quite a significant reduction in the risk of heart disease. What about metabolic health? So glad you asked. In the human randomized control trials, where they substitute polyunsaturated fats in place of saturated fats, what do they see? They see an improvement in insulin sensitivity as measured by HOMA IR as well as euglycemic clamp, which is the gold standard. They see a reduction in HbA1c. They see a reduction in fasting blood glucose. They also reduce C-peptide, which C-peptide is a kind of a marker of overall 24-hour insulin secretion as well as inflammation. So again, another check mark in the inflammatory box. And there's very strong evidence that polyunsaturated fats, when used in place of saturated fats, reduce liver fat significantly. So metabolically, you're seeing a much bigger difference. And we know also replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats also significantly lowers LDL cholesterol. Now, what about cancer? Overall, there doesn't seem to be much of an effect of replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats. If anything, there might be a slightly positive effect on cancer mortality by replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats, but it seems to be a really small effect. But again, the point is, it's not negative. It's not going the other way. It's not showing that polyunsaturated fats are way worse for you than saturated fat. It's either neutral or positive. And even the most like demonized omega-6, you know, Paul Saladino started this linoleic acid all, oh, does not increase cancer growth. It does not increase cancer incidence. It appears to basically have no effect on cancer. So what's my overall take home on seed oils? My overall take home is they are not innocuous to human health because they are a major contributor to the increased caloric consumption over the last few decades. Also, they are a marker for some poor food quality as well in some cases because most of the fried foods out there are fried in seed oils. Now, a lot of people say, well, if they're heated, you gotta worry about oxidation. That's really only a concern with oils that are heated, allowed to cool, reheated, allowed to cool, reheated, those things you want to be careful of. So fries, French fries, fried foods like chicken nuggets, you know, at fast food restaurants, perhaps there are some unique risks to those because of the way that they're cooked, but there's really not great evidence showing either way. In the end, focus on your overall diet quality. If you're eating every meal of fried foods, do you really think it's the seed oils that are causing the most of the negative health effects? Or do you think it's the fact that your diet is just crappy quality and you're eating a ton of calories? Sure, maybe seed oils, fried, re reheated seed oils are having some negative effect, but dude, you're just eating too many freaking calories. You're gaining body fat and body fat is pro-inflammatory. Body fat itself, adipose tissue, secretes cytokines that increase overall inflammation. So was it really the seed oils that your fries were fried in, or is it the fact that it's so freaking calorie dense and easy to overconsume? If we're looking at the oils themselves, if we are looking at when you replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats, you really can't find any hard human evidence where polyunsaturated fats increase the risk of anything relative to saturated fat. And in probably over half the cases, you see a slight or a significant improvement by replacing saturated fat 
with polyunsaturated fats. Now, this video is not meant to demonize saturated fats. Do I think that saturated fat is a risk factor for heart disease based on their effects on LDL? Yes, but just consume it in moderation. It's fine to have some fatty meat now and then. It's fine to have some saturated fat now and then. But do I think putting butter in your coffee every morning or like cooking everything in butter because you're worried about seed oils, do I think that's a good move? No, I don't think that's a good move. I think it's pretty stupid to be honest. There are no studies I'm aware of on these topics in human randomized control trials that are adequately controlled, replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat. Nothing I'm aware of shows a negative health outcome. It's either neutral or positive, and that is very telling. So when it comes to this hacking together of mechanistic data with epidemiology, you can create a horror story for almost any nutrient doing it that way. And people like Paul Saladino, Andy Chaffee, whatever his name is, they're great at hacking together these mechanisms along with cherry-picked epidemiology and showing all these things you should be afraid of, including plant toxins. Okay, let's just hit on that real quick. Showing mechanism. Look at this chemical compound that's present in plants. Look at what it does when we feed it in high doses to animals or uh, in vitro cells. But what happens when you feed people lots of fruits and vegetables? They live longer. They have less heart disease. They have less cancer. You are focusing on one stock instead of looking at the mutual fund. And it is either because you're ignorant or you are aware of all this data and you just don't care because it doesn't fit your narrative. So I know this video is going to get a lot of hate. I know people are going to leave lots of ad hominems, straw man fallacies, false dichotomies, and appeals to naturalism. I don't care about any of that stuff because data is more important than your punk feelings. Peace. I'm out.